Hello all, welcome to the Network Pen Testing course at Pen Tester Academy. Now in this video, we'll look at part 2 in which we will modify the Metasploit's DLL template to go ahead and make it suitable for use with append underscore DLLs. So as we discussed, the first thing we would need to do is figure out the name of the process under which we are running. Now, if you Google around, you would actually find that get module file name uh, is the API we would call and it is in kernel32.dll. Now, this API is really very simple to use. If we go to the API documentation real quick, And all this API says is, hey, if you want to know the current process uh, executable path, then just pass in the first argument as null, as I mentioned here. If this parameter is null, then get module file name retrieves the path of the executable of the current process, which is what we want. And then we go ahead and pass basically a pointer to a buffer lp file name and the size of that buffer right which is where this api would return the string and basically if you notice this would be in tchar so this seems to be very very interesting however we need to keep a couple of things in mind there are some limitations of what we can do at this point inside DLL main. Now, according to Microsoft's documentation, app and DLLs are loaded by using load library during DLL process attach, uh, process of user32.dll. So keep in mind executables that do not link user32 do not load app and DLLs. However, there are very few of them that do not link with user32. That's one limitation which means any user mode process which doesn't link to user32 uh, would probably not have a DLL injected inside of it from app in DLLs. Now, the second part is really more important. Because of their early loading, only API functions that are exported from kernel32 are safe to use. This is a huge limitation because what this means is we cannot use any other APIs apart from those in kernel 32 and of course your absolute raw C programming which doesn't depend on any APIs from Windows or which probably doesn't even depend on any library. So this is important. Now how are we going to work on this problem? Inside of DLL main all I want to check is if I am loaded inside run DLL 32.exe. If that is the case, then I do not want my payload to be started. If that is not the case, then I would want my payload to be run. And of course, other things would follow. So let's jump right in. Here is the code which we wrote in the last example. Now let me go ahead and modify this further. Now here I would want to know the name or rather the path of the executable inside which we are running. So let's allocate some space in here. So let's say tcar file path, let's say 2048 And in here, let's use this API get module file name. The first argument, of course, was null. The second argument is file path. And the third argument is the length. So this should ideally go ahead and return the file path inside file path. Now we need a comparison function which can check 
if run dll 32.exe is basically inside the file path right actually it should end with but uh, we could pretty much assume run dll 32.exe is pretty unique now the problem is typically you would use something like str str maybe in here uh, but we would want to do this from basic principles just using pointers similar to what i think hd moore had done here of creating his own b0 function right and he mentions the exact same thing he says hey hand rolled b0 allows us to avoid including msbc runtime right which is really what we want to do here as well now writing code to go ahead and uh, check if a string is present inside another this is really quite trivial but i don't want you guys to spend your time in programming so i have a little link here from where you can pick up an implementation so there are really two implementations on this page uh, i'm going to just pick up the first one you can read the post and then tell me what is the advantage of picking up the second one right or really would it even matter if we picked up either in our case so i'm going to just pick this up i'm going to paste this and let's just remove some small stuff here i'm just going to remove the const keyword okay so what this does is this checks if target which would be run dll32 as an example is it present in str or not if it is then it basically gives us the location if it isn't then it returns null so all we have to do is check if the return value is null let's also rename this function and let's call this uh, should something a little bit more descriptive maybe run dll check now i'm going to go back in here let me write some very simple c code if Null, rather, uh, whichever way, different people do it in different ways. Run dll check on file path, comma, run dll 32 equals equals null. That's the only case when we run the payload, right? In all other cases, we do not run the payload. Now, one of the other things which the Metasploit guys have done is at the very end, they have an exit thread. Now, we want the process really to just load the DLL and continue running so that the user does not see anything unexpected. So I'm going to remove this line. Okay. You could have put in a run dll 32exe as well. <clears throat> okay, now let's go ahead and compile this. Let me call this inject2.dll just so that it's easy for us to remark. Let's do a file just to ensure this is a PE32 DLL as well. 32 plus, sorry. Yes, it is. Now let's run our Python server. Let's go back to the Windows machine. Let's actually kill some of these run DLLs which we do not need at this point just so that we can start afresh. Now, I'm still pretty much using the setup which we had in the last video. And that's the reason why you still see these running so this is pretty much a continuation almost an immediate continuation of the last video there we go so matter predators have been killed 
and if I look at it right now we should have no sessions as expected okay now let's actually go back in here get the new DLL save it go back to the registry editor and change this to basically have two in here and then let's enable these DLLs by hitting one now let me start let's say calculator.exe if you notice calculator starts perfectly uh, it will also work perfectly but if I go back in here awesome I have my Metterpreter session fantastic I could go back in here I could look into process explorer and you'll actually see that calc.exe has started a run DLL32 right fantastic now inside calc.exe you see an app in DLL inject 2.dll and you see the same inside run DLL 32.exe as well the best part is inside run DLL 32 this app inject the app uh, app in DLL inject 2 kind of a tongue twister doesn't do anything the payload doesn't get executed just as we'd want let me start notepad here you go keep in mind this is just for 64-bit processes is what I've created again we can actually see now a notepad spawning a run DLL 32.exe as well and if you go back in here you would notice now we should have two sessions two new sessions available to us to work with awesome so you can already see how much power we have using this injection technique and because we also allow the original program to continue uh, by ensuring that the thread doesn't exi exit uh, the end user probably does not see anything different now keep in mind the attacker can be way more stealthy by only enabling the inject for certain binaries like Internet Explorer and all of that uh, through which the attacker might want to gain interesting insight into what you're doing Anyway, I leave that as an exercise to you to modify the code and try it out. So that's all I have in mind for this video. And if you enjoyed your time uh, at Pentester Academy, please do recommend us to your friends and colleagues in the InfoSec community. Thank you.